Welcome back. This is Dr. Marcia, and this is the Destiny Exposure Summit. And I have assembled a powerhouse group of speakers who are here to tell their story, to touch their tribe, and to expand their territory. And so next to the stage, I am introducing Dr. Shamika Porner. And I wanted to share just a little bit about Shamika. She is the, a pastor and the CEO of Open Heart Counseling Services, and she's also an author. And so she has been writing for, for about since she was 12 years old, and she's also a graduate from Higher Place Christian University with a bachelor's and a master's and a doctorate. Did y'all say hear me say doctorate in Christian counseling and psychology? I told you she was an author. She has written 15 books which is an amazing feat. You know, some of us struggle with that one. I know how I was, struggle with that one. But she has written 15. And some of the names, it's the national, the sorry, the natural and spiritual laws of being free at all costs. She also has a book called Surviving the System, which we're going to hear more about today. And she also is a playwright and she has a play coming and I'm going to let you I'm going to let her, sh her share it herself, but above all else, she's a firm believer in going after whatever she wants, despite her obstacles. She knows with God on her side, she can accomplish anything she sets out to do. So I welcome Dr. Shamika Porner to the stage. How are you? Great. How are you doing? I am good. I am good. I want you to, I know I, I shared a little bit about who you were. Can you tell me or tell us, tell the listeners just a little bit more about you? Okay, so I actually was born and raised in Alabama. I now live in Jonesboro, Georgia, which I've been in Georgia for like nine years now. Um, I pursued my career in counseling when I actually got to Georgia. So I did the necessary steps to get my degrees and my certifications. And I started my counseling business, Open Heart Counseling Services, July of 2018, which is now still standing. Um, it hasn't been easy, but um, I've made it through even the pandemic. I didn't have to shut down, but I started back and I kept going. Um, I do publish books. I am an author of 15 different books, um, which I will continue to write a book every year until I take my last breath. That's my plan for myself. Um, I also write plays um, and a play that I want to eventually come out hopefully this year is called exposed um which is talking about you know the hidden secrets of families um when they're not dealing with the uh internal issues in the inside house but they're always taking out taking um you know on the responsibility of outside things and so it just it's like a family harboring this deep deep secret uh, about their little son who was molested and so at the end everything comes to the light the family comes together they get counseling and you see a happy ending, okay? Um, and so that's about it for me. That's amazing. I love the happy ending. I love it. And what that makes me want to go, my question, I want to go back to the beginning, okay? And I know that you have, you, you written, you, one of your books is called Surviving the System. Can you tell me more about that and in your personal story? Yes. So from the age of two, um, we, like me and my other sister, it was, we had 10 siblings together. Um, my father he was an alcoholic and he used to beat my mom. And so we all got took and put in the foster care system. So me and the sister that's older to me, older than me, she came with me. So it was two in each home. Um, so we was in foster care from age two to we opt out of the system. 
Um, and the book that I wrote, Surviving Sister in the Life of a Foster Child, um, it tells it tells my truth. It tells my struggles. It tells the emotional um, abuse or the emotional neglect that took place, um, the, the embarrassment, the shame. It, it just talks about everything that happened while I was in foster care. And even though they say, you know, there's a statistic for foster kids. Some say you're supposed to be an alcoholic, you're supposed to be on drugs, prostitution. It's so many things that they have labeled foster kids. Um, and so that's one thing that I wrote the book for. I want to say that I survived the system. Yeah, I could have been a statistic, but by the grace of God, I made it out. Um, and I'm not saying I'm as successful as I want to be, but I'm on my way there. So um, that's what the book is about. And I also, also wrote a um, healing guide. So it's an eight-day healing guide to help, you know, people in foster care. If you've been in foster care, even if you're in foster care right now, it'll help you emotionally understand where you are. And your feelings are valid. It doesn't matter how you feel. Um, a person in foster care is something that only an individual can explain. You can't say, I empathize with something like that because you can't if you've ever been in foster care. So my cry is, I love foster care. I love the system of foster care, but I do want to broaden the horizon to um, that the world will emphasize more on the emotional side of a child or a person that's in foster care, not just not so much on the physical side. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's pretty powerful. So you said you were in there. You were in foster care since age two until you until you aged out. And what age is that? Twenty one, because I was in college. Twenty one. That is. That's 19 years in the system and your book surviving the system is so powerful. And so you want to focus on the emotional health of, of, of the child that's in, in that system. So let's speak to that. Let's talk about your mental health through the system. How, how would you characterize that? A complete struggle. Um, besides feeling alone, feeling not good enough, you know, it was, it was, it was. They had their family, and you know, you always didn't feel a part of it, even though you was, but you really didn't feel a part of it. So there was always this void of where's my family? Like, where's my my real sisters and brothers and my my real mom and dad? You know, and I'm I'm not saying that I wasn't grateful for you know, being in the home, but, you know, the truth is you can't uh, quiet a person when they, they're feeling their, their feelings are valid from what they're going through. Um, and so it's not that I would say, you know, it was just this bad place and it was just horrible, but I still have my truth. And my truth is I felt neglected. I, I felt not good enough most of the time. And the thing is, if you, I don't, I had everything I wanted. You know, we got everything we wanted. It wasn't the for the material things. It was the emotional part. And even today, there's some things that I still struggle with emotionally. And so that's why I say, you know, you can have, like, you know, like celebrities, they can have all the money in the world, but they can still be struggling emotionally and mentally. And that was a, bit, a very struggle for me. Even though I had counseling growing up and all that stuff, you know, I still struggle with some things because why didn't I have my mother? Why didn't I have my father? I mean, you would see other kids with their mothers and their fathers, and you would just literally, I was just literally cracking the inside. Like, I wish I had what they had, you know. And even though I had what I had, it wasn't what I desired in my heart to have. And, yeah. and so that's, that's very important for a person to understand. You know, you might have it all, but what you're lacking and what that void that you're needing to be filled is not being filled. So, Look, I'm jumping ahead a little bit because... You're speaking as a survivor, as a thriver, but you're also speaking as a Christian counselor. Right. Okay. And so it comes down to the, what we eat, what we need. And you needed something different. And no matter how much, no matter how much, how many things you got, it didn't fill this hole that was produced when you entered foster care, how do you, how does one get that? To be honest, 
I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't think a person ever gets that until they get old enough to fix that situation on their own. Because mm-hmm. even as a child, you know, a child wants what they want regardless. You can put them in counseling, you can put them, you can take them to the zoo, but that thing that they long for, it would never be filled until or fixed until I think they get to a certain age where they understand, you know, I'm having some trauma here. I, I see them having some issues. I need to go seek therapy on uh, on a more, you know, upgraded level like the age that I am now. Um, and so that's what I did. Even though they gave us counseling, I was still a wreck. I was still messed up. And I just think to this day, you know, taking myself and saying, you know what, I, I got to do something different because I see the anger. I had anger issues. I would fight. I would literally fight. Really? I, you don't look like you could, you, you were going to scrap. Oh, oh, I can scrap. I still can scrap now, but, <laughs> <laughs> but back then I had so much anger, doctor. It was horrible. I was fighting at school. I was fighting. And then it got, when I got older, I fought my stepmom. I fought, I fought. Like you said the wrong thing to me, it was over. And so I knew then I had some internal scars and trauma that I had to deal with. Um, So, and and back to your question, as a child, you would never, that's nothing that can ever be fixed until when you get older, then the, 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 the hurt starts leaking out and you start seeing you know, I can't do this. I can't. I'm going to end up in jail or I'm going to end up in prison, you know. Um, and that, that's the part of where some do. They they become a statistic because they don't get the help that they need. And so even with counseling, even now when I, as a Christian counselor, you know, my specialty is foster kids. If somebody walked in my door now and they said I'm a foster child, I wouldn't charge them anything. I wouldn't because that that's what my heart is at. You know, I want to be able to provide for foster kids. And give them exactly what they need. So, um, yeah, that's the comment. <laughs> that's amazing. So, I wanted to say something. I wanted to ask you the question. Your foster mom, I remember you telling me this. Something that she said to you that would forever change your life. What, what was that? So at the age, I think it was like 12, 13, somewhere up in there, I was in the bathroom, I was getting dressed. Um, and I don't know if we were, she's arguing or I don't know, I can't recall what was taking place, but I do remember these words, like I can hear them now. Um, you ain't never gonna be nothing any, anyway. Um, and moment, that's where my life changed. That's where my life changed because that, that not only scarred me, but it did traumatize me because I could hear those words over and over and over, 13 over, 14 over in my head, 15, as I got in my 20s. I still, and then I still hear it to this day. You'll never do anything. You know, that was a life-changing moment for me. Already feeling invalid in the foster care system. I already don't have your mother and father. I already feeling like you don't, you're not good enough and you don't belong. And just to hear those words, that was just the ice to the cake right there. That's just cooked it, baked it, put the ice on it and set it up, you know? And so um, I took those words. I literally took those words. At first, they really affected me. I acted out on the words. I was angry. I acted out. I, I was like, you know, I started looking down on myself like I, maybe, I, maybe I won't be anything. But then I had to understand this as I got older. You know, they say words don't hurt. They do hurt. They scar you if you allow it to. And so I just got a grip on my life. And I had just made up in my mind one day. I don't care how much I hear those words in my mind playing over and over and over. I'm going to do something with my life. Those words were the fuel to my fire. Okay. Ooh, say that again. Say it again. The fuel to my fire. The fuel to the fire. Yes. And so after that, I just went full force into everything that I wanted to do. And even even sometimes I would still hear that other voice, but I would say, okay, thank you. That's it. That's that gives me more fire. You know, let let's go, let's let's go. You know, and so that's where I am today because I didn't allow those negative words to control me or take over. You know, my ambition and you know my desires and my dreams and my goals. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Not to let it take over. So I want you to say into the atmosphere, I want you to go down the list of your accomplishments that you have done. I, I want to hear them. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell me. Um, I actually, like you said before, I graduated with my bachelor, bachelor's, master's, and doctorate from Ohio Place Christian University. Um, I also have published 15 books. Um, I have took anger management certification. I'm certified as anger management. I'm a chaplain, certified as a chaplain, um, certified as a life coach. Um, let me see. I also have, I, yeah, yeah, my doctorate in Christian counseling, of course. <laughs> my life, okay. Um, okay. I am now a founder of Open Heart Counseling Services, which I have two offices in two different cities, which I'm, think, I'm going to expand more. Um, and then I have like a community center that's into one office um, where I want to open up and kind of help the community, foster kids, um, mental health, um, you know, feeding the um, homeless and different things of that nature. Um, Hold on, pause there. Say say more about the community center. You, you say it like it is just you know, that thing over there. Can you tell me about the community center? Okay, so right now I'm, very, I'm sitting right here in it now. Um, yeah, but the community center, it would be a place where individuals, foster kids, um, mental health, um, just anybody that, that needs anything. I want it to be where the community can profit off of it. They can get food, clothing, uh, counseling, uh, whatever they need. So this is what, this is my dream for this place right here. And ministry, of course, you know, I do ministry even on Sundays. My pastor, as a pastor, I'm back here doing my ministry every Sunday at 11. So I want it to be mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially. I want it to be everything for a person, whoever needs whatever they need. So I love that. And so I, I, I did this for a reason. And I wanted to hear you go down the list of all of the things to show not only you, but to show the listeners that those words of, and tell it, say, say the words again, so I can hear. I'll never be anything. You'll never be anything. Never be nothing anyway. Anyway. But baby, <laughs> look at you now. Okay. Look at you now. And so what is your message for for your tribe? First of all, define your tribe. I know you mentioned foster care uh, um, adults, children, whomever, right? Those with a history of foster care. But uh, are, is there an, another audience that you also speak to? Uh, mental health, mental health, uh, mental health, schizophrenia, anger management, uh, bipolar, just the broad horizons of mental health. Women, you know, uh, uh, domestic violence. I've been there, done that. Um, I have a, it's called SWATS ministry saving women out of traumatic situations. And so I want to be able to, you know, um, help the domestic violence women. Um, and that, I think that's about it. Okay. And one thing I do want to touch on, you mentioned domestic violence. I, I know, tell me there was something that happened while you were in the foster system, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't so much of domestic violence, but it was like molestation. Yes. Yes. Can you share? Yeah. Um, you know, and many would say, oh, they, they were just being children, you know, and that's the excuse that families use. But it doesn't matter if you're a child, like if when you're being exposed to something that you've never been exposed to as far as touching the, you know, the hunching and all that other stuff. I don't think that's proper. I don't think it's that's, you know, uh, what a child's supposed to go through or even experience anything like that. Um, and I remember times where my uncle, he would come and touch my boobs and, you know, just touch my butt, his, you know, different things. And, and, and there's this, you know how they say you have an aurora of your past or something may trigger something. I remember one time my, uh, my cousin, he was watching porn and it had this certain music to it. And, that music, every time I hear that music now, it just triggers me. It makes me feel disgusting. 
it makes me feel so nasty because you know, as a child, you know, that's trauma to your brain. You don't, you're not supposed to be exposed to anything like that. And even to this day, when I hear that music, I just feel like I just wanted to grow up. You know, this is what I saw as a child. You know, yeah. everything what I went through as an adult, even with relationships, kind of like love. Like, uh uh-uh. uh. I don't let yet let alone what I'm what I'm going through, what I went through, but to have a to go back and relive those moments of how yeah. that made me feel, you know, that's not right. that, that's not a good experience at all. So with all of this experience, right, things that are seemingly, you know, negative experiences, what is your message as you have come through them and now you are a Christian counselor? The main thing, keep going. Keep going, never stop. And it doesn't matter what was said to you what kind of environment you might have been raised in, you know, your background, that does not define who you are. You define who you are. Because I could have, and and, and at one moment, I kept telling myself, oh, I was a foster child. I was a foster child. Like, I was making myself still be there. Even though, even when I was out the system. Oh, I used to be, I'm a foster child. And I was claiming that name. But I heard God say one day, you're not a foster child. That was a part of you, but that's not who you are. And so it doesn't matter the label that you put on yourself or others. You still have to be who God wants you to be, who he's called you to be. And once you come into that knowledge, then that, that also puts that, that, that top notch fuel on the fire. And you begin to know that this is who I am. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You know, I am good. Everything you made was good. And so you start repeating those positive things in the word to you. Then that allows you to get that strength that you need to keep pressing forward. So no matter what you've been through, God first, you moving forward, all things are possible. Yes, yes. I love all of that. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. So I want to know if someone wants to get a hold of you, they need a copy of one of your books. If they want to bring you as a speaker, they want to visit your your church. If they want to just connect with you, how do they do that? Okay. First of all, my email is Dr. Corner at no Dr. Corner dot openheart at gmail.com. I'm sorry. Um, my Facebook page is Dr. Shamika Renee Pointer. Um, my church Facebook is um, Open Heart International of Atlanta. Um, and then my website where I do, I do courses and everything as well. It's openheart.bonza.com. Awesome. I have the Instagram and Facebook links also on the screen. Reach out to Dr. Shamika. She can help you. And I want to know, as we get ready to close out, I want you to tell me what's next. What's, what's coming. I know you mentioned the play. I know you have the 15 books. Maybe you can run through some of the titles and just kind of tell me what, what else is coming up for you. Uh, yeah, the plays, of course. Um, eventually a movie. Um, I want to e- either do a play or the movie. But I'm banking on the play first, but then get it turned into a movie. Um, I know that for sure. And just to continue to build a community center um, the way I want it, to have a grand opening. Um, I just got it maybe two months ago. So I'm not in a rush. I want it to be, um, to be the way I want it to be before I do the grand opening and open it up to the community so we can have um, maybe a dinner and take pictures and, you know, cut the ribbon, Ah, cut the ribbon. I can't wait. But yeah, (laughs) but yeah. And so um, it just write my books. Um, I want to do a lot of more speaking engagements, um, get my story out there, help more people and just be a a beacon, just be a light. Yes. A beacon and a light you are. I love your smile. I love your personality. I love your mission. love your vision and your heart as the open heart counselor. So with that, thank you so much for being on the summit and I look forward to connecting with you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. And there you have it. That was Dr. Shamika Pointer. If you need some counseling, go ahead and reach out to her. I have her Instagram and her Facebook links on the screen. 
such a powerful story, a powerful testimony, and a powerful woman. Watch out for Dr. Shamika Porner. Stay tuned for more. 